Moving right along, our next performer, Jerry Cole. Jerry Cole, ladies and gentlemen. Let's just, uh, this is uh, like a lot of people here, this is my first time actually doing stand-up comedy <laughs> on stage. And, and I guess there's certain logistical things, like, I mean, what do you wear? You know, they're right, whoever said you couldn't see the audience, they were right. You can see the audience, you gotta go up like this and hold the lights like this and like stare at them. How's it going, guys? Um, uh, anyway, like, what do you wear? And like, see, like, I have such a loud voice, I have to be careful not to talk too loud, but then I don't want to talk too soft, so I gotta talk time in here. Anyway. Um, <laughs> I, I, I kind of intentionally, it's hard to go after Beth because she say, isn't she a great comedian? Yeah. See, I've already, I've already learned this, like, you know, the community of comedians thing, you know? Um, anyway, but I wanted to, to kind of, like, play off her material a little bit because, see, my mother's also in the audience, my mother and my father, and I thought, well, you know, she thinks that her mother has lowered her expectations. I think my parents' expectations are even lower than that. They're just hoping that I don't move back in and start borrowing money off of them again, you know? Um, uh, did anybody see the Super Bowl last week? Now, kind of predictable, huh? It, uh, for those of you that, don't, that aren't familiar with football, like my mother, for example, it, it, there's two teams, the NFC team and the AFC team, and the N AFC team, and the NFC team always wins, and usually by a rather wide margin. And, um, you know, I mean, I hate, like, lame sports analogies, but around the same time as the Super Bowl, I had, like, my latest rejection. I was, like, the losing corner of a love triangle. <laughs> you know, nobody that I told that to last week laughed, but because you're in a com I, I'm not t I, because I'm in a comedy club, people think they can laugh at that kind of thing. And I, and, and I was telling my friends, and of course they weren't laughing, but anyway, um, what was I talking about? Oh, and so, I mean, I hate these lame, I hate late like Hames, lame sports analogies, like when you're watching figure skating and, and you have these like, these jock guys that always do football and they're saying, oh, well, a triple axel is the same thing as a, is, is like a hundred yard kickoff return, as if like, you know, every, any like bozo that likes football needs to have, that like everybody knows football and so to explain to those bozos that like football, they need to, to, to translate all figure skating into uh, football terminology. Anyway, but I, I could, it was, it was like, it was just came to me, like, my love life is like the Super Bowl. I mean, I'm like the AFC team in the Super Bowl. Like, I used to never even make the playoffs at all, right? Okay, so I've improved a little bit. <laughs> now it's like, I'm like, go, I'm like cruising through the playoffs. The competition is not that tough, right? But then I get to the Super Bowl, and it's like they pull out all the stops. The big macho guys are coming out, and boom. I'm like down the tubes, and, you know, I'm like the Buffalo Bills four years in a row. It's like... It's like, I mean, what do I want to do? It's like, do I want to go back and lose again? Or maybe I should just go for like the worst season and, and hope to get the high draft pick or something like that. I don't know. Um, speaking of losers, I had a, this is my little segue here. Sp speaking of losers, how about we Democrats, huh? <laughs> now, I guess, you know, you know, you notice all the people that are laughing are on this side and not on this side. Um, I mean, I noticed because there were some people laughing near me, but I figured they just sounded louder because I, I was on this side. I didn't realize it actually is true that the people on this side are not laughing. <laughs> and are any of you coming up to do your routines anytime soon? Because I'm not laughing for you either. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, Democrats. Um, now, did, uh, now, this may be an erroneous assumption. Did anybody actually vote Republican in the last election? See, they're not willing to admit it because they know this is like liberal Seattle, right? Well, I, I've become a little bit more used to people voting Republican or knowing people that are Republicans than I was when I was younger because when I was younger, I was even in more of like this liberal sort of uh, cocoon, shall we say. Like I went to Berkeley and my parents are pretty liberal. I mean, they think that, you know, Lenin was too conservative or something. Um, and I remember back in 1972, for those of you that are, you know, the 17-year-olds, of course you don't remember this, but, but um, it was McGovern against Nixon, right? Okay, you know, it's really, sometimes it's too light, it's hard to get this exactly right. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, like, everybody I knew voted for McGovern, right? And we had this, like, one family friend that voted for Nixon, and it was like, 
Jim voted for Nixon. And I was like, what, Jim voted for Nixon? What a, what a scumbag, how could he have voted for Nixon? That's an outrage. Well, but then of course, when the election returns came in, you know, 61% of the people voted for Nixon. So I mean, how, you know, where, where were we at with that, you know, I mean? Yeah, I know that's not funny. I mean, it's just kind of a commentary on life, you know? Um, it is, I mean, it's just, it's just but, but, but people do, ch but, but people do change. Um, and I, I've gotten more conservative, although I still voted Democratic, of course. Um, but, but I have, I know this happening to some of my friends, like, do you have these friends that like, they used to be like hippies and now they have a dare to keep kids off drugs bumper sticker on their car? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, these guys, I mean, they used to be like, you know, they were like smoking everything and drinking everything. I mean, these people, I'm not, I'm not kidding. Oh, I can't talk to that side. They're not laughing over there. Oh, oh. These people, they were on acid at their wedding. I mean, I, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. If they were here, they could verify this. All my material is, is based on real life things. Um, and. But now they've got this dare to keep kids off drugs bumper sticker, you know, and so I'm thinking, I can just see this scenario, like, where, where they find out that their, their kids, like, you know, they have a little, what do you call it? They say, I've forgotten the terminology, you know, a little toot or whatever, or weed or whatever, and so it's like, now Johnny and Susie, we understand that you've been using drugs and we're very disappointed. Now we know, Yes, mommy and daddy did use drugs when mommy and daddy were here. It's hard to get the volume right on this. Mommy and daddy, uh, need a whole class just in this. Um, mommy and daddy did use drugs when mommy and daddy were your age, but am I over time now? Oh, well, all right. Anyway, mommy and daddy did use drugs when mommy and daddy were your age, but we know better now, and, and if, if you just tell us where your stash is, everything will be okay. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so you, you, I don't even need a punchline now because you see like a couple minutes later they're up there. Oh, this is the best stuff we've had in 20 years, you know. Thank you very much.